In this video we're just going to follow up on the introductory video um, to using Circa Home Developer for the first time and uh, completing a very uh, quick initial appraisal of a potential development project for a four bedroom detached house. So we um, looked at how we opened the file for the first time and then after we carried out an appraisal we saved the file with a different name so let's just open up that file that we saved and we'll just let the database um, load up and um, we can then get going on um, uh, just making some further detailed uh, changes to our model. So um, we uh, looked at the detailed cash flow version of Circa as opposed to the abbreviated uh, appraisal model. So let's just go back into that and what we did was we looked at the address fields, we looked at development outline and we looked at the market value on completion um, uh, of the project. So let's just go through those. We click on these uh, lines here, will take us to the relevant sections. So we entered our details here and then we advanced using the backwards and forwards buttons, we advanced the next section and then we looked at the development outline and we looked at the types of houses that uh, are available in the model um, and these represent the vast majority of the types of properties you might consider um, and we looked at the um, uh, size of the project that we were looking at and we had a quick consideration of the type of finish so we left everything as the as the standard model comes with and then we advance to the next section which is the market value so the way that we uh, quickly arrived at a uh, an, uh, an idea of market value for a four bedroom detached house in this particular area and postcode was that we looked down here and we used the online resources that were available. So we used um, the uh, online resources for um, uh, land registry. So we looked at a website that um, had a list of all the particular properties um, that had been sold uh, according to the postcode that we used uh, and it gave us an idea of um, the amounts, that it gave us an exact amount that it was sold for and when and then we looked at, um, again using the online search tool, we looked at uh, the, the types of properties that were similar online that were being marketed at the moment, if there were any. And um, between those two, we started to get an idea of how much a four bedroom detached house could be worth um, in the current market. And then we decided that we, there are additional um, uh, resource that we could use in trying to arrive at market value. There is, these are some of the uh, additional areas that we could use, but we quickly considered just um, clicking on here and looking for local estate agents in the postcode area that we use, and we considered just giving them a quick call, giving a couple of them a quick call, um, just making contact and, and um, seeking their views on the market conditions and get an idea of how much a four bedroom house could be worth. Um, in the market. So we um, then updated um, the um, model and we, we entered a, a, um, a value for a completed four bedroom house and then we looked at the impacts of our choices on the main categories here which is the development costs. Um, these, so these are all the costs that you would uh, um, incur in uh, carrying out the work in, in terms of completing a four bedroom house ready for sale and then there's a, an element uh, allowed for a developer's profit and then the results, results of, of that was that we had our total here we would then deduct away some of the costs and that would leave us with a budget for acquiring the land. So um, we click through to a summary page here, this is one of two summary pages. Um, this one is for uh, land. There's another one that's for um, that just gives all the development costs in a different order. Um, but this this format here is um, in a format that you would expect any surveyor to use or anybody in the in the in the development market to use. So it's called a residual land value, and um, it's called that because you. Uh, take the um, the end value that you hope to achieve you look at um, all of the likely costs that you are uh, potentially could potentially incur in f in completing a uh, a project um, 
uh, so that we have a house ready for sale and then what is left is the residual it's the um, remainder so this is the, this is our land acquisition acquisition budget and this is what you um, this is the the amount that you would have uh, uh, left after you took into account all your costs that you could afford to pay for the project and this will give you an indication as to whether or not a um, a project is feasible or not if it's negative if this figure here was negative then it wouldn't be feasible and you wouldn't uh, consider the project but it, if it's north of positive then you start to get an idea of how much um, the value could be worth and as a land owner this gives you an idea of how much you could achieve for a piece of land um, that would support a um, this type of property. Um, so let's just look at some of the uh, costs now. So, so we have the um, amount that we could potentially um, generate from a four-bedroom detached house in the marketplace. Gives us a, a value for land or an idea of the value for land that is not set in stone. Um, because one of the things that can um, impact on the land value are all these costs here. So this this um, this really does come down to looking at some of the detail to make sure that we are happy with our assumptions. So let's just look at one area, which is professional fees. One of the um, main costs involved in building a um, a, a property. And the model comes predefined with some uh, options ticked here, some choices. And this is why um, when you carry out a quick appraisal, you have already, um, you've got some of the costs already chosen for you. Makes it easier to do a quick appraisal. But then once you go to the next stage, then you really do start to have to think about whether these are costs are appropriate by reference to the property and where it is. So we may or may not want to use a project manager for instance. So if we do decide we want to have a project manager, then that cost will then um, be in addition and therefore the land acquisition budget will go down. Um, and similarly, uh, this is the, um, the model. Um, suggesting a figure for project management and this will change according to the types of properties that we choose the levels of finish um, a small property will need less project management so that these values will change a larger property will need um, more project management so this figure will go up but if we we consider that we um, have spoken to a few people we've got a, a few quotes and been a bit of a better, better idea of values then we can just click on these gray boxes and we can just make our own cha changes here and then the model will then uh, the model will then um, update itself um, it will get rid of the, the database assumptions and it will use yours. Similarly, if, we, if that figure that we've, uh, we've obtained as a quote is, um, includes VAT, then we have a choice here of ticking through the options here and just changing the VAT there. Um, so let's leave it as um, the cost plus VAT. So this is the VAT amount. Now VAT is very important in terms of um, developing um, resi uh, residential property because um, uh, these costs here, many of these, mo most of these costs here, are services, and as such. Um, as an individual uh, developer, you won't be able to recover these costs. These are additional costs. These VAT costs are additional. But if you're a VAT registered developer, then you potentially would be able to recover these costs. So this is the reason why it's important for us to um, uh, make reference to VAT. So once we've um, looked at all of these individual items here and made decisions as to whether or not we're going to employ the services of different uh, professionals, uh, and the likely costs or whether the model is, is acceptable, acceptable for the purposes. What we then do is we go back to our land acquisition budget and we can see that the values there have been updated and the, um, that's been reflected there. So that is in a, in a very brief overview um, how you would uh, conduct a, um, a residual land valuation um, to look at whether a project is feasible or not. Um, so we'll look at um, we'll look at some of these areas in more in more detail in other videos, but for now um, that uh, that uh, concludes a, a very quick introductory um, uh, section on land values.